I think we're recording now. And look who I've got with me, the gorgeous Tina Wallace. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Tina. <laughs> On a Sunday morning. <laughs> On a Sunday morning. Now, that is dedication. I know, I've, I hope you haven't got you out of bed at this time in the morning, but I just, I'm really chuffed that you're able to come and have a chat with me. Um, because for anybody who doesn't know you, you are life on the left brain and you are a fabulous equestrian influencer um who we work with i know you hate that term we're going to <laughs> i'm getting thought, used to it now i'm adapting to that <laughs> and i thought it'd be really good to be able to have a chat because there's a lot of doom and gloom and i thought we just needed to inject some positivity um into the world and who better than yourself uh, because <laughs> you're not trying to. <laughs> i am trying to i will admit even the last couple of days for myself i've been very Hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, think, I think it's really hard to, to sort of keep that positive front on when everything around you is very much doom and gloom. And, you know, and I thought that's why it'd be good to have a chat, have a chat about horses, life, everything. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully sort of lift everybody's spirits and, and make them feel a bit better. So yeah, I'm really definitely trying to do that. <laughs> I, know, I know. So I just wanted to catch up with you first of all, just, sort of, just for anybody who doesn't really know you, because obviously a lot of our community aren't necessarily horsey. So it's really just an introduction to you, because obviously we work with a lot of different influencers from fashion, lifestyle, beauty, and you are one of our favourite equestrian yeah. <laughs> uh, bloggers that we work with So and blogger. So just really just to sort of recap, you want to just introduce yourself about who you are and and what you do to start off with yep i'm like you say tina wallace and I, I everybody says blog don't they i run a blog called life on the left Rain, but i primarily vlog rather than blog i'm not very good at writing although i am trying to get a bit better at it <laughs> that's on my to-do list <laughs> um i've been doing that for about three years now i was on a tv program called the all-star academy which is what started me blogging yeah. we had to make monthly all-star reviews uh, diaries following yeah. from being on the show and yeah at the time they had to be under three minutes and now I struggle to get a vlog less than 30 minutes because I just can't stop talking. So, so that must have been really weird Tina to, to sort of start off because I mean had you done any sort of you know video work before or anything before that or? No not really well no not at all not 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 really not at all yeah. but <laughs> I'd always enjoyed editing photos and making like piecing together dressage show jumping cross country videos, but never actually talking to the camera. Um, but the process to get onto the show had to be an audition video. You should see how many retakes I've got of making that. <laughs> I've kept them. <laughs> yeah, I've got loads. I've got loads. I've got one of Banksy slobbering all over me, covered soaking wet t-shirt, and I'm like, yeah, that can't be in it. <laughs> Funny thing is, though, as well, back then, you felt that everything had to be, like, perfect, yes. perfectly spoken, perfectly yes. edited, and now I'm just like, yeah, Banksy can slobber over me all he likes, it's real, it is what yeah, it is. It is real, likes. and I think that's one of the qualities that we love about you, and I think what you're, why your audience love you, is because you bring a reality to it, you know, it's not completely polished, it doesn't always go to plan, and I think, you know, that really sort of makes your audience really feel connected with you, in that mm. sense, and I think that's a really important aspect to, to what the, the, the brand Yeah, thank you, it, it, you know, there's time. I've always shared the highs and lows of riding life, Life. yeah but then other life sometimes it is hard to know how, how much to share going. and how not 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 to <laughs> oversharing there's a fine line yeah exactly um but it seems and i found that out more so over the last couple of days when i'm like well we're not going to be eventing how do i still make weekly vlogs there's only so many times you can tidy your tack room or clean your tack yeah and yeah so many people have messaged me and they're like just whatever you're doing yes yeah. we want to have dreams yeah Exactly. Hang out with you and just, you know, yeah. feel connected really with the outside world because I think that's the thing at the moment, isn't it? And with sort of self-isolation and just, you know, just having to be at home all the time. Everybody's and lives have just changed so much just like that, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So going back to when you, when you're going back to happier times, yeah. <laughs> um, when you uh, initially applied for this uh, particular amazing opportunity with Horse and Country, did you, uh, did you have any inkling that you might be in with a chance? I mean, what was your sort of competition like? Did you, had you met everybody when you, uh, I mean, how, how did it come about? Yeah, uh, we had to upload our videos to YouTube. So obviously everybody's video application was available for everybody to see. So you knew who had entered, who hadn't entered. And and you could go and watch the videos so I will admit and I'm not surprisingly even though I vlog a lot I'm not that I haven't got that bigger self-belief which ironically some people don't believe but 
I don't, but I was quite confident about that. You know, when sometimes you just get a feeling. Yeah. I just had a gut feeling that, yeah, we might get it. I don't know why. I think it's because of Banksy. I think everybody likes to see Banksy. Yeah, absolutely. I think going back to the sort of self-confidence thing, I think, you know, having worked in that sector, I mean, obviously, as you know, I, I, well, I used to be a celebrity stylist. And yeah. I think, you know, one thing I could say is, you know, the person that you see on camera um, is not necessarily the person that is actually, you meet it one-to-one. You know, yeah. a lot of people yeah. struggle with confidence issues. But I think if you're really passionate about something, and I think, you know, that does come across when you're vlogging, you know, you really yeah. feel that energy. I can see why, if you were really enthusiastic about something, how that would have come across in terms of sort of people I absolutely them. loved making the audition video although like I said it took me a few a few retakes of certain bits because I wanted it to be ever so well spoken and everybody said I have my telephone voice on and <laughs> as I've explained, explained previously my mum's a qualified speech therapist hence I do know how to talk properly if I need to <laughs> but then often the Cornish twang comes out as well um, but yeah it just I don't know. I really enjoyed making the video. And like you say, when you enjoy doing something, that's when the passion and it just comes naturally then, doesn't it? Absolutely. So how long did you have to wait before you actually sort of found out that you'd got through? I think it was about, we had, oh, I'm not exactly sure if I'm honest. I think it was about two weeks after the entries closed when they were going to um, announce who had been selected. And then on the day that they were going to announce it, they put a message up saying, due to the number of things, they're going to delay it a day or something oh. like that. So we'd all been waiting all day to see if our phones would ring. Thank you, Brett. And it was like, oh, got another whole day of waiting. <laughs> I think it got to about 20 past five in the afternoon and I still hadn't had a phone call and I was like, oh, well. And then yeah. my phone rang and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of actually, um, you know, from, from that point on to, to where you are now, I mean, the stage is in between that. So when can you remember making your first you know your first blog can you remember making your first under your life on the left brain I mean how, how did that yeah. come about but take us back to doing the well, yeah because originally it was all set up and I entered as Tina Wallace eventing like you just you set up a Facebook page don't you so that um all your non-horsey friends don't get yeah bombarded with all your horsey updates and they don't understand so you set up another page and also I think I had entered another competition which is why um, I'd set the page up. It wasn't actually for the All-Star Academy that I'd set it up. It was something else a month or two earlier that we didn't get selected for. Um, and it was set up as Tina Wallace eventing. And then it was somebody, because I work in the motor trade. Yeah. Um, it was somebody that came into work that said, God, your life is just go, 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 isn't it? She said, you should um, document it as like life in the fast lane or something like that. Yeah. And it just clicked then because I've always had a fear of the left rein ever since Banksy's left rein canter incident where he slipped in our first ever one day event in the dressage test because I naively didn't put studs in oh. and he slipped and then panic bolted and went straight flat out into the hedge. If you haven't seen that video, I'll send it yeah. to you after. Yeah, because it was a camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, ever since that, I've always had a fear, but I will touch wood, say four years later or however, however long it's been that I've just about got over that. that. Just overcome about. That. It's taken a long time, but just about. So it went from life in the fast lane to life on the left rein. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Which on my website says very much like life in the fast lane, just a different type of horse power. Like it. Like it. It's a marketing <laughs> bit there. Yeah. <laughs> so so tell, tell me a little bit about, you know, in terms of going to doing your first video I mean for example yeah. how, how did that come about sort of deciding that you were going to go down the route of doing more vlogging well like I said we had to for I think it was about seven or eight months following on from being on the show we had to make a monthly diary which we had to send and then Horse and Country aired it on TV yeah. um, and then just after that I think I just carried on enjoying making it and obviously some brands had sent some products so I included them in the videos and they probably, I'd have to look back. I don't know how far YouTube lets me scroll back, but I think they probably started being about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And do you ever and look then, back? Do you ever look back at your previous video and content? I've contemplated <laughs> deleting some of them just because they're like, oh, that's a bit cringe. I just know from when I was styling, you know, I started out and at the time you think it's, been, I mean, it's like everything, it's an involvement, isn't it? Yeah. You, know, you evolve as, as, a, as, a, as a person and you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I look back at some of my earlier styling stuff and I think, gosh, you know, I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, and I think that, you know, it's always the way is that you sort of develop that and you learn from it. And, and, and I think- Oh, 100%. No, I know. I said I've been tempted to delete, not, not many, I've just been 
been like, oh no, that, but you can't, you, you want it there. And that's the whole point. That's what I say to a lot of people that are keen to start vlogging is yeah. just do it and do it for yourself because it's so amazing to look back in years to come. Obviously I've got like three years worth now yeah. to look back and relive all those memories all over again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think like you're right to say, you know, just leave it and, and then you just evolve you and develop your own style in that sense, isn't yeah. it? It's like anything, you know, it's like writing or presenting. All a learning curve. Yeah, all absolutely a learning curve. <laughs> and would you, what would you say would be, has been your biggest learning curve? Big, big loaded question there. What do you think has been your, your biggest loaded question for the day, Tina? It is, well, just to care less about what other people say about it, carry on and do it all for you because you're never going to make anybody <laughs> happy. There's always going to be people who love you and who hate you. That's the yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, like some of the, I haven't had that much negativity, but a couple of the things that I have had, just actually, when you sit back and look at it, you think I actually feel really sorry for them. And that's not me saying, oh, you're sad. I feel sorry for you. That is legitimately me feeling yeah. really sorry for them because they really must have a ba bad. Yeah. time in their own lives if they really feel the need to Absolutely. get pleasure from doing something I mean, like that and I, I really feel that you know the way that sort of obviously the digital world has evolved um, you know in, in terms of being a supportive community I think that's so important and I think that there is a lot of you know a, a lot of nasty stuff going on on social media yeah, um, yeah and, there is. and I think I think it's it's a, you know it's a really challenging time and it, it takes you know it takes a real inner spirit to be able to put yourself out there you know I mean I've done tv presenting in my past and you know and i felt really awkward about coming to do this because i don't really put myself in front of camera <laughs> and, because i feel uncomfortable about it you know partly because we're yeah. putting our you know but how good you feel afterwards once it's all done and complete oh, well, like, oh, well, if i did that yeah absolutely, absolutely and it's about confidence thing and there is always you know that worry and that challenge that somebody will make a negative comment but i really think you know you have to kind of step aside and like you say you know why where is that coming from to make that person go out of their day to make that negative comment rather yeah. you know we're not saying that you want to be gushing and that you have to make positive comments but why Let's move on to the next thing, thing. yeah why say something if you can't say something nice? <laughs> that's, my, that's my take on life. And I think, you know, that again, you know, that, that, that's, you know, that's the downside of doing what you do. Because every time you make a video, you're putting yourself out there to be critiqued. And, you know. And I don't mind criticism, constructive criticism. I like feedback and criticism. Yeah. Not nasty criticism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we need criticism to improve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about Banksy because obviously I know from what I've seen that you know, but other people watching this might know about Banksy. Banksy is your beloved horse. Tell us He's my bit. baby. Yeah, I don't have children. Um, we can go deep into the conversation if we like, but my husband's quite a bit older than me, and we have chosen not to have children. So my animals are my babies. <laughs> so yeah, Banksy is my baby. We've got he's um, he's going to be thirteen this year, and I was only saying to Rob yesterday. Oh, because we won't be eventing or doing much this year then, does that mean he can just stay 12 for a bit longer? Because he won't, he won't have worked hard won't this age. year. No. I don't want to be eventing him next year when he's 14, because that's really sad. But I'm hoping that if anybody that is listening knows Emily Spritey, who's still going strong at 25, that with the right care and love that he's going to get and that he's had since I've had him, which was seven, that he will still be doing things like that at 25 too. Absolutely. And what is Banksy? Is he an Irish... He's an Irish sports horse, yeah, by the artist, hence his name Banksy. Yeah. And he is 15-3 and he is um, all or nothing kind of horse. Yeah. yeah. He's very sprightly, very sharp. Or he can just be like, no, I can't be bothered today. <laughs> Which is rare. It's very rare he can't be bothered. But it, yeah. yeah, it's one extreme to the other. But yeah, he's, now, obviously, he's, you, I mean, you do eventing with him, obviously. I mean, in terms of, of your plans for him immediate, I mean, what are you doing? Are you keeping his work up? Have you taken his work down? Or are you hacking more? Or what, what are you doing? What's again, different? complete reality because of my everyday job, which is nine to five, more like eight to six in the motor trade, Monday to Friday. I don't really actually ride that much in the winter. I can only ride at weekends or if we manage to get to an indoor school in the week, which I will admit this winter we've done very little of, yeah. mainly because of the weather. Who wants to go and get soaking wet and freezing cold when you've got nothing to aim for? Fair he's, enough. Yeah. Exactly. He's, he's not going to have to <laughs> When he comes in at night when I get home from work, he's quite happy just to go straight in his stable and eat his dinner. He doesn't want to be going out in the trailer. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I have, I had just started to up his workload. I had just managed to start riding after work and then 
this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. Obviously, we all need we need the riding for our sanity. So as long as we're allowed to continue riding, I will continue riding. I didn't ride yesterday because the wind was so bad here yeah. in Cornwall. Yeah. I was like, yeah. everybody's saying like, be careful, don't put the NHS under extra strain, anything like that. And I was like, yeah, if he's got an excuse to spook and <laughs> that will be it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's just no point. I know what he's like in strong winds. Yeah. What's the point in putting the extra? Yeah, absolutely. Rain? Yeah, I think it's exactly. about being sensible in terms of, like you say, at the moment, you know, we're okay to ride our horses and we want to enjoy them, but it's about being sensible about what kind of risk you're putting yourself. Definitely. In. Yeah, I wouldn't be going cross country schooling or anything like that at the minute because I just, yeah. I don't need to get him prepared for anything. Yeah. So I don't need to. I, I mean, that's not saying anything to anybody that still is, but I just, at the moment, I think we do all need to be. I mean, in Cornwall, we've only got one major hospital. Wow. Okay. And it's full it's always full to the brim so it's going to be even more full to the brim right now so yeah, yeah. anyway let's sort of think about some positive <laughs> things sorry for changing the tone there but i am continuing to ride him yes but i'm taking it carefully yeah absolutely so in terms of of, of banks's friends uh so you know you've obviously i've seen a little little kind of little back. dinkle yeah. yeah he's actually called bertie but he just never actually gets called bertie he is is he nine hands something? I'm not sure. He's 30 inches. I'm not sure what that actually equates to, bad me. Yeah. And he's a little done miniature Shetland. And we got him as a companion. And he's like, everybody said to me, you're going to reg regret getting a Shetland there, hellers. But yeah. he is an angel. He yeah. never puts a foot wrong. He, touch wood. <laughs> he, he's just awesome. He's such a sweetheart. We love him dearly. But he gets called Dinks or Little Legs. He never really gets called Bertie. And so, obviously, the back, how was that first introduction? And, and do you think Banksy had ever seen anything as small? No, Banksy was a bit petrified to start with. He, he was in his stable and we took him off the trailer and he looked, I've got a picture of it, he, looked at, he looks like he's in love or falling in love, but he literally, before that second the picture was taken, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> but are they best friends now? And who's the boss in the field? No, they're not, unfortunately. <laughs> Banksy, Banksy gets very jealous of him. Oh, Banksy like Banksy does not like me giving him any attention. Yeah, um, Banksy's a proper mummy's boy. So Tina, do you have any other fur babies? Are they your two? Yes, I've got Samuel the Spaniel, who if the door is probably asleep outside the door right now. If I open the door, he'd probably come in and bound on me. Yeah. and he's going to be eight this year. Yeah. We've had him since he was a little pup. He actually started life as a proper working gun dog. Oh wow! Um, and lived outside until one Christmas that he came in and then never left again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got a similar story with the amount of animals that we've got here as well. So we've kind of collected them and uh, yeah, they kind of arrive and, and never leave really. Well, so. talking of arriving and never leaving is then Puss Puss who turned up in October 18, sorry, not 16, and has never left. <laughs> and he's just like, he makes me smile morning and night. He's a yard cat, but again, he's taken to sleeping inside quite a lot recently. Um, but he, it's lovely because he smells of hay, so it's nice. <laughs> oh, bless him. And every morning and every night I, when I go outside, I'm just like, oh, you make me, he's just so needy and he wants to cuddle and he purrs really loudly. And oh. yeah, I just don't think there's any way that he could ever have been a feral cat. I think yeah. he must have got somewhere. A a bank or, dump or something because he's the, we took him to the vets he's not chipped um but they said it looks like he's had quite a bit of dental work over the years so he's definitely been loved by somebody at some point for them to have spent money having his teeth done um but yeah he, he i don't think he's going to go anywhere because he loves life here <laughs> so dina to talk about the equestrian blogger awards because i have to mention that because obviously we oh, thank you yeah, that was such a surprise i was yeah, so shocked yeah. at that so for anybody watching that doesn't know you were a co-winner of our equestrian blogger awards with emily uh in terms of your amazing efforts that you've and entertainment that you gave myself and also sam oh, Marina, yes. you, um, i know i've really yeah. missed emily she's been in thailand for the past three weeks thankfully home safely now but it's so weird like we do the odd bit apart, but we yeah. do a lot together, as you know. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. So what was that like winning that? I mean, in terms of... Such a shock. I was so <laughs> shocked. Like, yeah, amazing. So many lovely messages and feedback from that as well. So yeah. thank you guys yeah. for hosting those awards. Oh, well, you're absolutely welcome. I mean, it was overwhelmingly a huge response from the public vote as well for those particular <laughs> awards. I mean, you really... Oh, it was lovely. It was a good the way you did it as well, that you could have, like, 
part judges and part voting. Yeah. Well, I think it's really important to involve everybody in this. You know, the whole point of having these awards was it's to celebrate talent within the equestrian community. And I think they do the brilliant. And I'm really looking forward uh, to having those. I think they're going to be kicking off in the late autumn. Fingers crossed everything obviously calms down on this side of things. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking forward to doing those as well with you, Tina, yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, I think really, you know, in terms of, of chatting, I mean, I don't know whether that you've got any sort of passing advice to anybody who maybe wants to use this time to be able to do some vlogging. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, like I said, I, I made a vlog a couple of weeks ago, like the basics of starting to vlog and how easy and straightforward it can be. You don't even need a camera. You can do it purely just on your phone. I recommend it. Oh, I'm using it for my light, my tripod. I was going to say, <laughs> you can get a tripod that's like £20 off Amazon and your phone and you're away. That's all you need. Yeah. Um, you can edit. I majority of mine, despite having the computer and the laptop that I'm on, nearly everything I do, I edit on my phone. Um, so it's really easy to do wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You don't have to be sat in front of a computer for hours on end editing. And would you say in terms of, I mean, obviously, you know, if we're, we're stuck indoors, we're not going to be able to sort of go out and demonstrate. And, and I mean, are there any tips for sort of talking? I mean, I know we talked about things that if you're passionate about a particular subject, that's mm. going to really come across in terms of when you're talking on camera. But are, are there any sort of good top tips that you can give in terms of starting out? I mean, you know, obviously having a light, that's really important so people can see you. Uh, yeah. What about, I mean, obviously if you're using your phone, you don't need a, a plug-in mic, but maybe if you're using audio, no. yeah exactly yeah I don't have all that kind of setup I've literally just got the basics and I think that quite often shocks people to know that the whole hour long vlogs can be made purely on a phone um it's not even well it's a few years old it's an iPhone XS so it is a few years old the only trouble and I've after making that vlog and telling people how easy it is and you can do it all on, all on your phone the only thing that I realized I didn't talk about was the fact that your phone often tells you you've run out of memory and that is the only downside of having an iPhone. It comes up storage full. <laughs> so you may need to sign up to like the cloud or whatever and extend your storage. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Because that is infuriating when that happens. You've put all that hard work in and then you can't export it yeah. and upload it. And do you film content high resolution? So the HD, just so, because obviously the, the time yeah. to put it online, it's decompressed it even more and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I film in 4K on my phone so that once you edit and zoom in and stuff like that, it has got good enough quality. I don't often, I have once or twice uploaded to YouTube in 4K, but it takes so long. And also, unless you're watching it on a smart TV, people don't see the benefit of it anyway. No, and I absolutely. think the majority of people do watch on their phones or iPads. Yeah, absolutely. So 1080 is perfectly good enough. Um, but I would always film it in the highest resolution that you can so that once you've edited it, you've got more to play with. Yeah, so and how do you edit it, Tim? Are you doing it through iMovie or on your Through iPad? iMovie mainly, yeah. yeah. I also use an app called the GoPro app, which is good for just piecing bits together with music. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to, like, I think people think, oh, but I haven't got a GoPro. You don't have to have a GoPro to use that app. You okay. can, anything that you've filmed on your phone or on a normal camera, you can import into that app and it will just piece bits together for you. Fantastic. And do you plan your content? I mean, do you say, right, okay, or is it just an idea comes about and you think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll save that for another time. I'm not the world's most organised or um, <laughs> good at planning, no. I generally <laughs> just, just film whatever I'm doing that weekend, which again, in more recent times, it's a bit like, not really doing much with the horses and I automatically think oh people only want to see the horsey stuff but turns out they don't so yesterday me and my mum filmed some pilates so that people have got some stuff to do at home we're gonna get that uploaded um I'm not sure it's going to be the best tuition because I've never done it before but she's a qualified pilates instructor oh nice. so yeah I just thought it'd be fun to give people some something different to do whilst they're stuck at home that's fantastic. I was going to say to you, my next question was, you know, have you got any content plans that you're going to be releasing? So when, when, will your, when can we watch out for your uh, I'm pretty sure thing? that's going to go live tonight so that people can give it a go this week. I mean, that what I've done is I've done a normal weekend vlog and then incorporated some of that into it. But we've also made a video, which will probably be 25 minutes, half an hour long. So it's complete. This is how you can start doing Pilates. Oh, fantastic. I think like mum said the equestrian side of us makes us think well that isn't going to do anything because it just looks so slow and so it's like you're not really <laughs> you, you, you don't look like you're going fast enough or working up a sweat or like exerting yourself enough but actually it's the smallest controlled movements that work yeah. you the hardest absolutely it's about I don't I know that I woke up this morning I was like oh I can't get out of bed <laughs> <It's a stretch laughs> I'm not the session. Hot tub. <laughs> 
<laughs> you need to be stretching. That's the other, that's the next video. How to cool yeah. down the warm up effectively. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time out of your weekend to come and have a chat with me. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll put this video out. It'll make everyone have that feel good factor. And yeah. I'll be checking out that Pilates uh, video of, of your. And if anybody's got any ideas or anything else we can do. But again, now we've gone, well, I guess I kind of got to not even see my mum anymore now as well. It's kind of this weekend has been the. Yeah. We're a little bit behind the times in Cornwall because we're still going to work and yeah, things like that. And yeah, yeah it's all a bit weird. But yeah. um, well, you're keeping the level like of keeping the level of sanity for this all, Tina, in terms of keeping posting your videos and keeping us really upbeat. And oh, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. I've spoken to somebody as well that I know, a good friend that um, is a everyday fitness instructor, and she's on about doing a. We'll do a live collab of a work out one evening this week so we'll, we'll give that a go as well amazing well i look back for those definitely i won't be videoing myself and sharing it with you, <laughs> I'm glad to say that. mind you i might have a, a remote office version of it but uh, but listen thank you so much for taking the time no to be always a delight to chat to you and thank you very much and have an amazing rest of your weekend no problem at all lovely to Take speak care. to you see you later Bye. Bye.